obstructive jaundice. I will make sure that I will let you know every basic thing regarding your theoretical courses for obstructive jaundice. Make sure you like the video, subscribe the channel. Okay, let's get it started. Okay, let's get started with obstructive jaundice. So what basically is obstructive jaundice? For knowing obstructive jaundice, you should know what is jaundice. Jaundice is basically defined as increased concentration of bilirubin in your body. And bilirubin is a basic component which is produced in the liver for bile salt and for yellow coloration of your feces and yellow coloration of your urine. So bilirubin is involved in that. But if you have high concentration of bilirubin in your body, that will lead to jaundice. So jaundice is defined as discoloration of the skin or sclera. And this yellow pigmentation is due to increased bilirubin concentration in the body. In case of jaundice, the patient usually have yellow sclera. And what's the reason is that bilirubin loves to bind to the elastic tissue of sclera. For knowing obstructive jaundice, you should know about the bilirubin mechanism so we got started about bilirubin mechanism so this is yellow discoloration for sclera we will deal with metabolism of bilirubin we have all rbcs who have completed 120 days of life cycle within the human body these rbcs have nothing to do body function within the body so they are sent to spleen where they can be broken down and there is formation of bilirubin this rbcs goes to spleen which is an extra vascular Organ. As a result, spleen will degrade it. There will be formation of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin further decomposes into the two components. These are heme and globin. The globin will form amino acid, which will be again gone to the blood circulation for any need, and he will be divided into iron and bilirubin. Iron, same goes with amino acid for reuse in blood circulation. Bilirubin is further converted to bilirubin. So this is blood circulation and we have formation of bilirubin. Now this bilirubin is called unconjugated bilirubin. And this unconjugated bilirubin is circulating throughout the blood. But now this unconjugated bilirubin has to become conjugated bilirubin. So it reaches the liver. The thing is that this bilirubin is lipid soluble. But to get inside the liver, you should be water soluble so liver provides a special enzyme albumin so that bilirubin can get into the liver and be conjugated so uh, this is the basic receptors i'll let you know about these receptors these are very vital receptor regarding obstructive jaundice i will let you know about them further discussing about obstructive jaundice so we have unconjugated bilirubin inside the liver this unconjugated bilirubin is passed through bilirubin transport and pass it to the hepatocytes. In liver hepatocytes, this bilirubin will pass through smooth endoplasmic reticulum and where they will find an enzyme which is called UDP glucorinyl transferase. This is an important enzyme which convert unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin by deattaching albumin and so we have conjugated bilirubin this conjugated bilirubin is further given up to biliary system in biliary system we have different concentration of water we have conjugated bilirubin we have bile salts we have phospholipid enzyme and uh, we have xenobiotics so further we will discuss about obstructive jaundice so obstructive jaundice is the conjugated bilirubin cannot enter the bile calliculi and pass back into the blood and unconjugated bilirubin cannot be clear out of the liver let's discuss about the previous diagram you can see that uh, this conjugated bilirubin this conjugated bilirubin is produced within the hepatocyte and it has to come out of that hepatocyte or the liver this is a conjugated bilirubin and it has to come out to to get to the biliary system by mrp2 but uh, in case of obstructive jaundice, this is blocked, it might be any uh, other problem, but this cannot get out. So conjugated bilirubin cannot get out and this unconjugated bilirubin which is present here, it cannot enter so that it could be converted into conjugated bilirubin. So as a result, we have obstructive jaundice. So we have two basic causes, decrease intrahepatic bile flow and uh, decrease extrahepatic bile flow. So in in both these cases we have an obstruction at this region that might be due to different causes and that are obstruction of the bile and the bile acid so causes for the decreased intrahepatic bile flow is that first we have primary biliary cirrhosis which means that there is somehow damage to the liver that is causing obstructive jaundice or we have autoimmune hepatitis means that 
we have inflammation of the liver or alcoholic hepatitis due to ethanol alcohol or we have sepsis which means that the liver injured by pathogens or any toxins and in the end for that we have congenital conjugated hyperbilirubinemia which includes rotter syndrome and dubin johnson syndrome regarding these two syndromes we will discuss later and for decreased extrahepatic bile flow we have cholecystitis which refers to at least one gallstone present in your bile duct or maybe formation of carcinoma in your pancreatic head in, or we have gallbladder carcinoma or we have primary sclerosing cholangitis which refers to the a bile duct either inside or outside have been inflamed next we have dubin johnson syndrome and rotter syndrome i told you previously that we were going to discuss dubin johnson syndrome and rotter syndrome i've told you three receptors which are involved most commonly involved in obstructive jaundice this is the bilirubin transport which allows the unconjugated bilirubin to pass through the hepatocytes this is organic anion transport protein which is responsible for entering of the bile acid or entering of unconjugated bilirubin and this is mrp2 which is defined as multi drug resistance type 2 and it is responsible for conjugated bilirubin excretion in case of dubin johnson syndrome there is a defect in multi drug resistance type 2 receptor and this receptor defect will allow decrease canicular excretion of bile so we have dubin johnson syndrome further we have rotter syndrome in case of rotter syndrome we have a defect with organic anion transport protein receptor for this it's responsible for intake of bile acid and we have and we have defect regarding oatp we have decreased bilirubin uptake and we have decreased intrahepatic binding then we have clinical lab finding and symptom then we have clinical lab finding and symptom as we know that in our liver we have increasing concentration of unconjugated bilirubin or indirect bilirubin and we have increased concentration of direct bilirubin or conjugated bilirubin so clinical findings show that direct bilirubin or conjugated bilirubin has increasing concentration indirect bilirubin also have increasing concentration but decrease in urobilirubin urobilinogen is a basic decomposition of bilirubin when bilirubin reaches the intestine it is broken down and forms urobilinogen so urobilinogen is responsible for yellow coloring of your feces and yellow coloring of your urine so when there is obstruction then the patient will have a prominent decrease in urobilinogen the patient will be suffering from dark urine or he may have malabsorption malabsorption of vitamin a d e k which are basically absorbed within the liver and the patient will have a prominent pale stool or you can probably say that white turd stool regarding the treatment of obstructive jaundice we have a surgical treatment which is used to remove any obstruction that might be any gallstone or any uh, carcinoma formation or any removal of carcinoma so we will, we will use a stent by using a ERCP endoscopy you can support me by subscribing to my channel giving a thumbs up and in the end if you have anything to ask, leave it in the comment section.